Well, hello and welcome. My name is Velma. You can connect with me at velmanoles.com. This is all about your leadership chat. What does that mean? You get to listen in on valuable insights from valuable leaders just like you. I want to encourage you to go ahead and subscribe so that you never miss another episode And if this is of value to you, please share the nuggets that you're going to take away from all these great leaders. Please give a big welcome to my special guest and your valuable leader, Blake Lindsay. Blake, welcome. Thank you very much, Velma. So good to be here today. It's a great day to be alive. Hey, welcome. So it's so good to see you. And I'm so glad to have you, Blake, on your leadership chat. Thank you. Yeah, great. So, Blake, to kick things off, could you tell the listeners a little bit about who you are and a little bit about what you do? I certainly will. I've been totally blind ever since I was nine months old, and I had a uh, a cancer tumor called retinoblastoma, which kind of sounds like dynamite, doesn't it? But it was (laughs) cancer, very serious cancer, and then mom and dad had a a gut-wrenching decision to make to remove that, remove my eyes, and they successfully got all the cancer. And I've been very blessed for that. As I've gotten older and become an adult, uh, you know, over the last 20, 30 years, blindness has really been an advantage. It's a gift. And that is to help inspire people to be their best because they've been able to see me have some successful careers. And it's because of the parents that I've had. And we'll talk about some of the people that inspired me after a while, because I know you're so good about asking all your (laughs) guests that. I love that. Love your your podcast. Thank you. And It's really been a blessing being blind in a lot of respects. And there's some obstacles that are uh, a little unique for me, obviously, Mm -hmm. to hop over. But we all got hurdles to hop over. There's no doubt about that. I'm communications and outreach manager with Envision Dallas, formerly the Dallas Lighthouse for the Blind. But beforehand, I worked at Bank of America for a long time. I was a trainer there. After I became a customer service rep for a long time, they trusted me to train people. And I used (laughs) to say, hey, if a blind guy could do this, I know you can. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> used to tease people a little, and uh, most of them took it real well. It was fun to train people and work there for around seven years, and I was a, a broadcaster. Uh-huh. Everybody always told me, Velma, that I had the face for radio, so I decided to take them up on that one day, and uh, I went to the vocational career center called J. Everett Light when I was in high school uh-huh. and got into radio broadcasting, was in it for 22 years, and uh, at the end, it was kind of part-time because I worked at Bank of America at the same time. Mm-hmm. is I worked at 106.1 KISS FM here in Dallas-Fort Worth. And that worked out real well. It was a seven-day work week, but the uh, the jobs were so different from each other that it really mm-hmm. was fun to do both. And uh, each of them were unique. And uh, so it's been great. Being employed, I've been with Envision Dallas now for nearly 14 years already. Oh my and gosh. we are the largest employer for people who are blind and visually impaired in North Texas. Yeah. And not only that, we're the largest service provider as well. So We've got a lot of things, including an apartment. When people lose their sight, they Mm. can go over there and check things out and realize some of the tools that will really advantage them and help bring their independence back. Mm -hmm. So it's been really fun to turn people's life around because that is quite a transformation when people have to go from having sight to losing sight. It's 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 horrible at first, but with the right attitude and the right motivation and the right resources, we can certainly turn those people around. And uh, they get excited about life again. I've had people even tell me that uh, being, you know, becoming blind, it might be one of the best things that ever happened to me. I've had people tell me that before, Velma, because wow. they see things differently for the first time. Mm. They're able to listen more and they're able to enjoy more and realize uh, some of the advantages that we all truly have. Mm. Oh, my goodness. You know, you 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 don't just uh, help people embrace the attitude. You actually live that. I I am just uh, sitting here in awe when I hear you talk because one, you you have just this fantastic voice. Okay, I mean that is just, and you know how I I feel about that. Um, I, we we've talked about. It. I'm like, man, you have such a beautiful voice. But for for what you do, you know, to take something that. I guess others might view as this huge devastation in life. And it, and it, it is certainly, you know, like you use the word obstacle and we all have different levels of challenges and obstacles and we don't know, but I, I love how you just said, you, 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 you know, you, you, lo- you lose sight, but then you see things differently. You gain a positive perspective if you allow yourself wow. to, and it's tough at first and it takes yeah. 
some people anywhere from six to 24 months. It depends on the attitude and what they're going through. But at the end of it, Mm -hmm. it just seems like more and more people realize that, you know what? I just lost one of my senses, but I still got my common sense even more than ever. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's just really a blessing to be alive and to be able to encourage others what I'm still able to do once they're able to get reoriented. And it, it seems to work out most of the time very well. And we can employ them. We can train them. Uh, we got a, a guy that in our manufacturing department that actually uh, just totally modifies the machines for safety, accuracy, and efficiency. Yes. I call him MacGyver. I don't know if you remember that show from the <laughs> I 80s. I am familiar but, with yeah, MacGyver. <laughs> this guy could invent anything, and he's really good about actually closing his eyes and blindness relatability. But that's right. what we kind of do is we really uh, reacclimate people who are blind uh, right. later in life. But also a lot of our guys have been there blind all their life. And uh, yeah. And so they could be mentors. And so there's a camaraderie there that's hard to explain for people till they come out and see it. And mm-hmm. then they believe it. You know, seeing and yeah. seeing is believing, says the blind guy. <laughs> but, yeah. you know, it's <laughs> it really is a, a very fun experience to show people what we do out there. Yeah, no. OK, well, listen, I know you are um, you have so much to give to us. So I, I want to get into, um, you know, my question around valuable leaders and and I consider you to be a valuable leader to so many. And we'll talk about that, how you are, I believe, and how you are paying it forward. But for now, I'd, I'd love for you to talk about who in Blake's life is a valuable leader. And why would you say that person is that valuable leader to you? It, it's that person that, you know, you would say, Velma, if it was not for this person, Blake would not be the man he is today. Who is that valuable leader? Well, I've had some good advisors throughout life, but it began with my mom and dad. They really, uh, they blazed a trail for all of us to be able to follow. And they really accepted blindness in a way that, um, you know, looking back, I'm, I'm still kind of just all smiles when I think about what mom and dad had to go through and how they actually handled it. But yeah. beyond that, my dad worked for a wonderful man by the name of Zig Ziglar. And he is such a motivator. Now, Zig yes. started... In 1972, he had already been a speaker for a while because he was a wonderful sales guy. Yeah. And so he did a lot of sales seminars. But in uh, July 4th of 72, he became born again, and it seemed to really change his life. And he was yes. able to motivate people on all levels. And even right. people that uh, were, were not Christians were really encouraged by Zig. And he walked mm-hmm. the walk. Right. And I met Zig when I was 16 years old. And that was a, a, a the best age that I possibly could have met Zig because mm-hmm. at that point in my life, I liked to do things Blake's way the best. <laughs> and I was very, uh, very much a, a normal kid, really. I, I was uh, kind of rebellious, but I also knew mom and dad had taught me the right way. And they had really encouraged and influenced me mm-hmm. uh, in the way parents ought to do. Right. But Zig was that extra person that my dad introduced me to. And he knew that we were going to hit it off because Zig really hit it off with anybody. Oh, and yeah. he was just one of those guys with a big booming voice. <laughs> who accentuated those things that really are, that really matter. We talked about a lot of things. Zig caught me right before I went from the blind school to public school. He knew that I was going to transition yeah. my junior year in high school. And it had been wonderful being at the blind school because I learned how to be independent. And I was taught by teachers that were used to teaching people who were blind. Mm-hmm. And so that gave me some extra leverage there on just reality and independence. But when I went to public school, Zig said, Blake, your blindness. And he, he really blasted a trail for this. He said, this is really going to be a blessing to you mm-hmm. because people are going to be able to really observe you. And if you've got the right attitude and you're being the best you can be, mm-hmm. uh, you're really going to influence others to do the same thing. Being blind is going to be able to really give you that, that extra edge, if you will. Mm-hmm. And I believe he's certainly right. And that I didn't recognize it immediately, but in time I did. And I, I realized that Zig had told me that and I'm sure my parents probably encouraged the same. And right. uh, but but Zig is that one person that really stands out in my mind. And there's been a lot of people since then, but he was the initiator. And then I got to work with Zig wow. from 2006 through eight. Uh, I actually got to really get to know him better. We had been uh, apart from each other because I lived 250 miles from him for a long time mm-hmm. down in San Antonio. He was up here in Dallas where I live. And so in 06, uh, I called. Mr. Ziegler. And I said, Hey, I'd like to work for you. Uh, I'm just temporarily out of work and, um, hadn't been out of work long at all. And and he said, well, well, come on, you know, talk to my son, Tom, he's kind of running the company at this point. Right. Uh, Zig at that time was 79 years old. And he said, I'd love to work with you, Blake. Of course, I remember you and I remember your dad well, and come on down. And so 
uh, wasn't long at all uh, before uh, Tom Ziegler, who's my age. He's five months younger than me. I'm sure he'd remind me of that. <laughs> <laughs> Tom and I are brothers, and uh, Tom has been a, a blessing to me o- over the years. Yeah. And that's when I met Michael Norton, who actually was our sales director at that time. He was VP over sales. And so I got to work uh, with Ziegler Corporation. We called it Ziegler Inc. And uh, it was a uh, positive life attitude. And I got to make a lot of phone calls, but I got to speak a lot. And I got to know Zig very well. He used to come in my office and listen to me sell. And he was just really encouraging and would make some people nervous. They have Mr. Ziegler standing by, you know, the, the master of motivation, the master of sales. <laughs> but with me, it was just like, wow, Mr. Ziegler is taking time with me today. And we would laugh. And and he used to say, Blake, I don't know why you're not using your first name. And I said, oh, Mr. Ziegler, I am. And he said, no, you need to go by the name Blazin. That needs to be your first name. And I had been Blazin Blake on the radio for years. And he knew that. And he said, you ought to just be Blazin' Blake. And I didn't really want to imitate Zig Ziglar because he had a really cool name too, you know. <laughs> so I was just plain old Blake Lindsay, you know, and I'd intro myself to people. But uh, he had a point there. And then, But Zig and I were very close. And, of course, I was sad when he passed away. But what an example uh, he said. And he went through a lot of, a lot of trials and tribulations mm-hmm. in his life. Uh, 1995, losing his daughter. Yes. I believe that was the year that uh, he lost Susan. That was traumatic. And in just the way that we would see him go through things as a a Christian motivated man, uh, it made a difference because we saw him being attacked by life sometimes as it does. Life is definitely better than not by, by every, every token. Uh, but, um, it was really interesting to see Zig go through certain things that inspire me yet today when I look back at him. So that's a, uh, my best answer to your question. Zig Ziglar was that one man. Uh, who made a difference in my life. He lived to be age 86. And so good long life. Yes. And what an example he said for millions. And, and, you know, Blake, he is still doing it. I, I automobile university, right? That's right. Here. <laughs> Every time I'm in my, in my car, I'm like automobile university, listening to Zig Ziglar. Absolutely. And, uh, but, I, but I'm loving it. Blazing Blake. I, I am owning that for you. <laughs> Blazing Blake alive and awake. <laughs> Only Zig, only Zig could do that. Oh my goodness. I had the opportunity to talk to his son, Tom oh. uh, Ziegler as well, just virtually. I haven't, did not have the opportunity in this life, but will in the next to meet Zig. Yes. And, uh, and uh, Tom, you know, he just, he, he he's just like his dad in the sense of the attitude and just really embracing life, you know, and to its fullest. So. Yes. Oh, he, Zig Ziglar has rubbed off on you. Let me tell you. <laughs> well, thank you for that. And I, I know he has on YouTube and you're right that he still lives today in, yeah. in people's uh, vehicles and automobile university, but he's just got a message that resonates with each and everybody. I did a podcast for Mr. Ziglar right. back in 06 through 08, and I would take excerpts, 10 minute excerpts of, of Zig going at it and motivating. And we got a younger demographic and Zig was excited about that at the time because he said, Blaze and Blake. We've got an opportunity here to really inspire a younger generation. And I, I thought, man, I hope you're right. And I, th- I thought he would be. And in fact, he was because a lot of the calls that I even still get today are from people that are 20 years younger than I am. And of course, I, I'm yet much younger. I'm not, uh, I'll, I'll be 59 here soon enough. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm still celebrating not quite being 60. But right. anyway, <laughs> it's, it's a, a blessing to be alive and to be healthy. And, and uh, I hope to live at least as long as Mr. Ziegler did. And his podcast, though, really gravitated the younger generation because they were hip and fun. And I would just uh, do a quick intro and a quick outro kind of recapping what he had talked about and just kind of highlighting, you know, some of the points that he had made. Yes. Yes. Oh my goodness. Wow. Couldn't uh, have picked a better person for us to talk about and share with anyone that's listening. If you don't know Zig Ziglar, which I think there's very few that don't, you know, plug in, put his name in there and the Google will tell you more than you need to know. But some great stuff out there with uh, Zig Ziglar. Yes. Yeah. All right. Now let's move on to the next question, which I don't know how you top Zig Ziglar, but I'm sure you've got something in your back pocket. So Blake, my next question is talking about when we have someone in our life that makes such a tremendous impact. And at the age of 16, Zig started that path for you, you know, pouring into your cup to fill it up. And so I always love to know how my guests, my valuable leaders here, how are you paying it forward? Like, 
how do you impact the lives of other people to help them become valuable leaders? Well, one of the few advantages that I have realized be becoming older, people realize that I'm not old, but I'm I'm older than they are in a lot of cases. So I notice a lot of people that are ages, say, 18 to, I don't know, 40 years old, come to me for advice often. And they realize that I'm a positive person, but that's because I was really led initially by my mom and dad. And I really went back to my roots after I got all the kidhood out of me uh, by the age of 24 or five, I, I matured up and, right. and realized I want to do this God's way, uh, you know, which a lot of times was mom and dad's way. And I, I got back to my family basics. And uh, so I've been able to set a good example. So people come to me for advice mm -hmm. and they tell me their situations and I'm able to interact with them and counsel them and kind of get them back on track a lot of times. And then I hear success stories on how they uh, overcame whatever hurdle they were trying to hop over at the time. Mm -hmm. And, you know, like I said, we all have, uh, we all have those hurdles. And, and so we can all help each other Yes, even by mentioning some of the obstacles we're currently, currently going through. Mm -hmm. And then when we actually overcome the obstacles, when we can really have that victory, but also teach people how we got through it, because that's really, that anchors us all to realize yeah. that we're all going through something at some point in time. And, when we share that, we're not necessarily complaining. We don't need to make it a complaint, but we just need to uh, tell our friends and family what we're going through so that they can uh, be in prayer for us, but also really uh, hone in on, on the victory so that they themselves, next time they go through something, they're going to say, man, I remember Blake didn't go through same thing, apples to apples, oranges to oranges, whatever. Sure. But there's similarity in the sense that we all go through struggles in life and it's about overcoming each one of those. And so I feel like I'm, I'm paying forward by often telling people also what Zig would have told me, you know, in, mm -hmm. in the situation that they're going through, mm -hmm. uh, what I, what I would have imagined. And sometimes it's identical, you know, sometimes it matches perfectly, uh, you know, but, but sometimes I'll say, well, I think, I think that Zig would say, so I might as well say that. <laughs> and, and, but I, I'm able to really, uh, I try to be a good example. And, you know, I think everybody has one bad day every week or so. And I, I'm not uh, among those who don't. Obviously, we we have way more good days than bad days, right. uh, but but things happen uh, to uh, put us in a, a mood that we shouldn't be in occasionally. But it's it's great to be able to snap out of it and mm -hmm. get over it and uh, and move on. And and I think that I've learned how to do that more and more as I've if I as I've aged. And I feel like people can come to me. They look at, at a, a guy in his upper fifties now that has been there and done that in a lot mm -hmm. of cases. And so I'm able. Uh, to really blaze this forward, you know, things that Zig taught me, my parents taught me, and just lifelong learning. Yeah, you are living up to your Blazing Blake name. <laughs> well, I try to, you know, and we all goof sometimes, all of us, but uh, yeah. we can get back up and, uh, mm -hmm. and make a difference in people's life, and we all should. Yeah, you know, and I love the fact that you said we are here to help each other up, you yes. know. We're, we're here to bring, uh, because everyone has a story. And we don't know what someone's going through at their point in time in life, but being having that right attitude, I love that the attitude that you bring, an attitude that sets a pace of being the kind of valuable leader that comes alongside for others, um, like like Zig did for you, and like your parents, you know, modeled for you, and so many other people as well. I had an opportunity in the last year to be president of a large Lions Club club. Uh, uh -huh. uh, it's the Dallas Oak Cliff Lions Club. Right. And we had some situations in our club, unfortunately, that were difficult uh, to get through. But I've I've gotten a lot of applause here recently for getting us through those mm. situations. And I just really believe that it, it's it's who we hang with. It's who the, the people that have influenced us the most. Right. We really can carry that forward. And I, I got a, a letter uh, from an attorney that is in my club, and he's been an advisor to me. He's actually 80 years old. He's still phenomenally intelligent and, and helpful. In, in so many areas because he's been a lion longer than me, but they honored me by uh, letting me be president for one term, which is just 12 months. It's ending here soon. But I really go back to that, that leadership and uh, the fact yes. that I was able to be a leader. And then I was president of our homeowners association here at, where I live at Marquis. We have 126 units. And so there was a lot of uh, things that I needed to learn how to handle. And I got to do that for around five years. And so leadership, uh, it, you know, the older I get, the more I get to do. And sometimes it's not fun, but I'm able to really go back and, and evaluate uh, some of the struggles that I've gone through and how to get through the next ones. And each struggle makes us a little stronger for the next one, even though they're not 
uh, you know, simultaneous, they're, they're not exactly relatable. A lot of times you can still work with, with what you've learned in the past and how you got through things, right. Keep, keeping the right attitude. Zig used to say is at least 80% of it. And it probably is. It's hard to put a number on it, but that's right. Yeah, no, absolutely. And yeah, I, I've always believed in the saying that no one climbs a mountain alone. Right. Very right. You, you just, you can't climb that mountain alone. I mean, mountain climbers do not do it alone. They always <laughs> have someone, you know, they have, You're right. yeah. So that, that speaks volumes to the fact that, you know, people will come to you and that you're willing to be there for them. And, and you've had that example in your life and you're, you're actually living that modeling it for others. So doing the best I can, and that's and, all we can do. And we should do. Yeah. Give absolutely. it our all. Absolutely. Oh my goodness. All right. Well, here's, here's the, uh, the, the, the question I have now around for the listeners today, for people that either are going to listen to this now or sometime in their life, some season, they're going to listen in on this podcast with Blaze and Blake. And they're going to say, what's, what, what would he say to me? So my question is, what's one big takeaway that you would want to give to listeners on how can they become more valuable leaders in their own lives? What would you say? Well, I wrote in my, my recent book about compassionate leaders. We have to really listen to each other's difficulties. Uh, you know, when you're a team leader and, and some of your teammates or your, your staff may be going through some obstacles, you really got to be a good listener and have a little bit of uh, forgiveness uh, from time to time. You got to be able to work with people when they slow down for a moment when they're going through something. But uh, that that encouragement that you can give your your team player mm -hmm. goes a long way for the future and for the present, obviously now. But also uh, just just knowing that your boss cares mm -hmm. is a big deal, and knowing that your boss truly is trying to relate with you the best you're enabling him to or her uh, by by what you're telling him or her. Right. And I've I've had both male and female bosses lots and. Uh, and they've both been wonderful in most cases. I've had some that are not. Yep. Uh, but the ones who are have really earned my respect even more. Mm -hmm. And it makes me want to really accelerate and try harder to please them and the mission and what, what are we doing and just really serve the whole organization better based on, on my boss giving me the confidence that he or she cares and they're listening. And, uh, and I think that also being a good example every day the best you can. We all get a little goofy sometimes and, and say <laughs> some things that, we wish we hadn't. And, and I, uh, for one, am, am guilty from time to time, but I would say that I do it less and less all the time. And it's because I'm working on it and I'm, I'm conscious of it, yeah. very conscientious of those things now more than I ever have been. And I realize that the better example we can set for each other, it just, it really, uh, it rubs off and gravitates and, you know, people respond to it and try to imitate, especially if you make them feel happy and you're listening to them and now you're setting a good example for them. And uh, I used to occasionally use a bad word here and there. And, you know, less and less of that is happening <laughs> in my life now. Yeah. And that's, that's what we want. I mean, nobody's perfect. I get it. I'm not, yeah. you know, nobody is. But mm. we can re really do our best as human beings to strive for perfection. And that's what I try to do daily. Mm, well, powerful word to care for people. You know, they it's 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 you've heard the saying, I'm sure. And our listeners have a, a, as well that. Uh, people don't care what you know until they know how much you care. I've always liked that. Yeah. And it speaks volumes. And, and it's not just a cliche or quote. It's truly, I, I, I truly believe that if, you know, if we could stop the work-life balance because it really doesn't exist. Work and life is together. You know, you, you, right. you have to give and take on either side of things. But when you hire someone, when, you know, someone's working in your organization, you're hiring the whole person, you, you, you know, their family as well and their responsibilities outside of work as well as in work. And I just believe that if we could be more uh, compassionate and, and caring, it would a what a wonderful world it would be. <laughs> Velma, can I share a funny story with you about you, a compassionate you, leader? You, you can because and I would love, do you have your book there? Because I would love, well, we'll talk about that, how folks can learn more about your book. So go ahead, just share the funny story. When I was 19 years old, I'd been a broadcaster for a while because I got to do that in high school as well at the career center that I mentioned that I, I got to go to. Right. And when I was 19, uh, I was moving 
around Texas. And I had lived in Austin for a while and I had worked for a radio station for about a year. And anyway, I wanted to move to a bigger market and I had some friends down in San Antonio that I wanted to visit more often than I, than I could. It was only 70 miles away. So I uh, called Bill Thorman. He, he's still alive today. Bill and I are friends, but uh, he was program director of KTFM in San Antonio. Okay. And they were the number one station in town playing hit music and giving away a lot of great stuff. And I think that that really helped him to win as well. But I called Bill and he said, Blake, I've heard you on the air before. You sound good. I'd like to hear an air check, which what that is, is a recording of our show. And so uh, I sent him one and I, and he liked it and he said, come on down. I want to meet you. Well, guess what? I didn't tell him I was blind. Right. Right. <laughs> <laughs> didn't tell him. Okay. And so I got there and, and I was overdressed that day. As far as being a DJ, I had my suit and tie on, but I think he respected that. I wanted to look good for him. Sure. And, uh, I heard, I heard the, uh, the receptionist say, uh, you kind of whisper, Hey, Hey, Billy, you know, you got a blind guy waiting for you here. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> and so I kind of heard that and I, I kind of grinned. I turned the other way. So Bill got in the room and I shook his hand firmly and I, I could tell that he was kind of taken aback for a moment that I was blind. I said, Bill, I'm Blake Lindsay, you know? And he said, that was before I was blazing Blake. Right, 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 right. <laughs> he said, well, let's sit down and chat. And Bill pretty quickly told me, and he didn't say it in a negative way. He was telling the truth when he said, I don't really have anything for you right now directly, but I like your sound and I like your enthusiasm. And so I started telling Billy just, just so I could satisfy his curiosity I thought I'm going to be prepared to tell Bill things that he probably wants to ask me, but he's probably afraid to. Mm. So I started telling Bill exactly what I would need and what I don't need. And it really encouraged him. And he was writing things down. I could hear him right. scribbling things down as I was chatting. And he'd come back with a, an occasional question. You know, he was paying attention. Right. So then I got real cocky, Velma. I said, so do I start this week or next? <laughs> and Bill told me, even though he had already told me that he hadn't anything for me at that right. point. Right. He said, Blake, I'm going to start you this week. How's that? Yes. And I said, That'd be great, Billy. I really appreciate that. And uh, I won't let you down. And so four years later, we were riding in his car. And he said, Blake, I got to tell you, you sure were cocky when you came in here. But you know what? That really sold me on you. And I'm really glad that I gave you that opportunity. Yeah. And here you are today, you know, working for Waterman Broadcasting these years later. Wow. And you've inspired my troops and you've been a friend. And and Bill was good for me. He uh, was a good coach along yeah. the way on how I could improve. Right. And uh, he wasn't afraid to tell me the same things as he would have told a person who cited because he realized that I, I cared and wanted to know. Sure. But that was compassion. You know, Billy was willing to take that that win-win partnership. Mm -hmm. I call it the gamble almost because right. you kind of think, uh-oh, you know, I, I think I'm doing the right thing. I hope so. <laughs> uh, but it turned out to be so. And so that was really kind of my my first endeavor, first you know experience encounter there with uh with a compassionate leader who gave me a break even though i was blind and didn't even tell him i guess you could say that was disrespectful on my part but why tell him right, you know right. I mean, he's gonna find out <laughs> right 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 <laughs> and as long as i'm i'm hitting him up with the solutions that that you know are necessary then sure. uh, it it worked out real well Velma. and uh, I, I like that story a lot oh my gosh i love that story and you know what i was i was thinking as you as you went through that and then, you know, four years later, you and Bill are in the car and, and he's like true confession, <laughs> right? I'm thinking this is the training that Blazing Blake got when he was, you know, mentored by Zig Ziglar on sales. <laughs> yeah, you know, and I never told Zig that story. I don't think maybe he, yeah, he read it in my book. Come to think okay. of it. Okay, okay. Yeah, so it's in did. the book. All right. Yeah. <laughs> okay, that's awesome. Yeah, it probably did come from him. Do I start this week or next? You well, know? <laughs> it would be something, you know, you just, you, you, you kind of just, take that positive attitude that this yeah. is a good thing, right? And uh, it, this is the right place for me. And I've got the right talents to, to be able to contribute and serve the listener. So it, it's just a matter of when do we, when do we start? <laughs> yeah, it was fun. And I, I tried that, that trick again, a couple of times. It didn't always work for me this <laughs> week or next, but you know, it was really a, a good positive thing there for, for Bill to right. say, you know, I'm going to hire this blind guy. I think he's going to do this place some good. And then I, I feel like I was able to, and he did me some good as well. Yeah. You know, when, when, when our mutual friend, Brian said, Velma, you got, he, Brian and I, you know, we, we were talking and then of course, Brian's on your leadership chat as a valuable leader sharing lessons. And he said, you know, you got to meet Blake. 
You, you just got to meet Blake. I don't know why, but you got to. And I was like, anyone you tell me I need to meet, I'm going to meet. And here we are. Well, so. I'm sure happy about that. Brian's a, a good dude indeed. And uh, Brian's got a, a big voice. You talk about having a, oh, yeah. a big voice. And and he's going to be a mentor. He, he's another mentor of mine. He got to hear me speak recently and gave me a, a really good report on it. And that did my heart good because I thought this is coming from a pro. Right. Who knows? And uh, so Brian, Brian is definitely a good season leader, no doubt about it. And he got to work with Zig a, a yep. longer time than I did. Yeah, another student, uh, student leader of the Zig uh, school. I would say Zig uh, philosophy, right, of attitude, having that yes. uh, check up from the neck up. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you can tell I've been listening to Zig. You know, you got to plan. I'm glad. Yeah, you that's plan, great. Prepare and then expect to win, right? And right. We'll see you over the top. Um, all right. All right. Well, th- my next question, last question to wrap things up is folks are going to, some folks are going to be hearing you for the very first time here. Although I know you have that famous voice for the radio station and well positioned in Dallas, but on, on your leadership chat, they're going to hear Blake for the, for the very first time. And, uh, and they want to connect with you or want to learn more about you or learn about the book and get the book and, you know, just kind of stay close. And so I always love to give an opportunity for my valuable leaders to share how listeners can learn more about you and follow you. So would you share, how can the listeners learn about you, learn about what you do, get your book, please, you know, share about the compassionate leader, the book as well. Well, thank you, Velma, for that opportunity. And sure. I appreciate that a whole bunch. And I'm at Blake Lindsay, B L A K E Lindsay, L I N D S A Y. Right. Lindsay, you know, it's, uh, it's kind of a different way to spell it. Dot com. So Blake Lindsay.com is where you go. And you can really learn a lot about me because I've really taken a lot of pleasure in putting up a lot of things on that website, which are true stories in my blog, mm-hmm. very true stories. And then the book is called Overcoming Obstacles and getting extraordinary results. And I really like the book because it's my 10 favorite stories of lessons learned. It's it's the real deal. And it's what I went through and what I, uh, the outcome that I got from it. And then my dad and I worked together and my dad's been an educator for 62 years. And I said, dad, I've written some books solo that I like. Okay. But I want you to help me to make this a really great book. I want it to really be able to teach people And so what dad did is kind of summarize each chapter for me at the end of the chapter. But he also wrote a self-assessment that's fun to take. It's only like three questions at the, after ending each chapter, there's a three question assessment you can take. And if you do, you'll be all the better for it. And, and I did, I took it and uh, Mm -hmm. it was a part of my book. I took the assessment because it came from dad and it's just getting us back to the basics. A lot of times we just get away from the mere basics on how to be better people and to be better leaders. And so at the end, there's an accumulative one. And so that's several questions yep. uh, that, that, you know, I've, I've talked to a lot of people that have taken that as well. And that takes a little longer to do. But if you care about yourself, like most people ought to, uh, you're going to take time to read the book. It's a fun read. It's 128 pages. It's a, a, a nice paperback. I like to Braille uh, my, my name, you know, when I sign the, the yes. copy for people. It's so fun to Braille it. And that's one thing you can do with a paperback. That's an advantage. I can put it in my <laughs> Braille writer and I can type. And then my, my wife uh, made me a, a stamp that I can stamp, you know, in, in print as well. But overcoming obstacles and getting extraordinary results is going to help you be better. Better. Uh, my dad really helped me to improve the book with his assessments and summaries. And I encourage everybody to read it. It's, it's a fun one. And I, I've read it a couple of times and uh, I, I don't falsify anything. I don't have to. No. You know, being blind has really been kind of unique mm. and uh, kind of funny sometimes, kind of not so funny uh, yeah. on other times. But it, it's really given me an opportunity uh, to be unique in, in, uh, in my blindness, but also how I've overcome unique obstacles. But we all have, I'd say, the same amount of obstacles. So even though you're not blind, Velma, mm-hmm. I, I would say that you probably have as many hurdles as I do to hop over. It, they're, they're just different. Everybody. Exactly. And so that's, that's the whole thing, but you can get a hold of me at blakelindsay.com. There's a uh, place for you to be able to, um, to email me. I love email. That's, that's really a good way to go. Or you can call me and that number is also on my website, which I can also give it's 214-207-6972, but blakelindsay.com. If you go there, you can really find out about me and you can be in touch 
And uh, I'd love it if you got the book. It's only 10 bucks. It's a cheap book. <laughs> and I, I made it that way. I'm not making profit on it. Right. Um, mm. It's it's really one of those things that I uh, I, I give people the ebook. If you want the ebook, I even give it away. Mm-hmm. And uh, it's a nice PDF people can read. And then it's also an audio book. And I'll give that to you. Yeah. So the 10 bucks is to you know pay for the printing and all that went into that and the promotion and all. Uh, but you know, that's an inexpensive and I'll, I'll get it right to you. It's, yeah. it's a fun read. Yeah, no, you are so generous and we will put the, you know, your website is going to be here on the screen. So, uh, in post-production, we make sure we add it in there so folks can go to the website, be able to get the book, connect with you, learn more, read the blogs, um, you know, just really support your mission to help other leaders. And, uh, I, I'm, I want to take a moment and really extend a sincere thank you for your time today. For those that Velma, you're welcome. And thank you. Oh my goodness. Yeah. We, we, for those that you don't know, we're actually recording this on a Saturday because of schedules and just, you know, getting Blake and I together. And I just really uh, appreciate you and your time and investing in this and sharing, you know, the stories and just uh, really giving back. So thank you for what you do, Blake. Absolutely welcome. And it's a big pleasure. It really is. And you're a fun person. And I just hope you keep this up and people are going to get a lot out of your podcast. Hey, thanks so much for watching another episode of Your Leadership Chat. I hope that you've enjoyed this video. Make sure that you hit the subscribe button here and tap that bell icon so that you never miss another episode. I hope too that you'll give us a thumbs up on the video for a like. And then if you feel led, please share the video with those who need to see it. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you next time on Your Leadership Chat. Bye for now.